And there's some serious Oscar buzz surrounding this. The excitement yeah. is coming through. Um, I wanted to know, how did you best prepare to play James? Um, there was no easy way to do it. You know what I mean? Um, you know, James is a guy that is uh, living with a huge loss mm -hmm. that he is responsible for. Mm -hmm. Um, and also, uh, because of that loss, he's now disabled. He deals with an amputation, and he's pretty much a loner and pretty much alone, um, and not by choice, but also by choice at the same time. Mm -hmm. uh, so there were a few things that I had to do. I had to, one, figure out how not to judge him, because a big part of me when I first read it was like, well, what the fuck, like, how did you, why? Why is this happening to you? Why mm -hmm. did you do this? Uh, and then by kind of moving that aside, I realized how much I, I wanted to care for him mm -hmm. um, because I feel like he's a person that was burdened by this loss and felt like he didn't deserve to have anybody care for him. And there were a few things that made me judge him a little bit other than the accident, uh, just that, well, you had this huge car accident and you chose to work as a mechanic for the rest of your life fixing other people's damage. That's mm -hmm. very interesting. You know, he's an amputee and hasn't changed the way his, his home looks, you know? You see a scene where the crutches are in the corner, they're covered in dust, there's no pictures of people on, on the walls. Like, he, he's become this isolated kind of, like, martyr in a way. And um, I didn't really want to care for him. Uh, but in really going through it, I realized how much care he needs and how much care he has given to other people. Um, and that, in essence, opened me up in a way. Um, so, you know, he scared me. <laughs> I realized that it wasn't really just judgment. It was the, the fear of what it's like to see this man traverse his life by himself, uh, dealing with this grief and what grief looks like and how hard it is to carry alone. Yeah. Uh, and I saw a lot of myself in him in essence. And so, uh, you know, I, I felt like I had to take uh, this journey with him in order to figure out how I could get on the other side of my own personal grief. Yeah, and it's, it's definitely a journey because it, what we see in there is that he's suffering from survivor's guilt as well. Of course, yeah. And he obviously confides in Lindsay. Mm -hmm. And it just kind of makes me wonder, like, what is his overall end goal? Because when they break it down and he's obviously explaining about his loss, loss the loss of his sister, loss of his, um, obviously, nephew, and just seeing that he's in a big house by himself, which he even points that out. Oh, wow, this is a big mm -hmm. house. But you can also see that, obviously, he wants companionship. Mm -hmm. So... How does he go about finding that with Lindsay? We do this thing in grief where we, at some point, try to act like everything's okay. Um, because in the acting like everything's okay, we kind of convince ourselves that we're kind of over it, right? Like we've made this kind of progression past a certain level of grief where we are actual full human beings that know how to <laughs> navigate the world and we don't mm -hmm. we do a lot of trying to cover our scars you know what i mean and 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 for most of us we're pretty successful at it until that one person comes along that's like i see right through all of that i see through it because it reminds me of what i do and so i think that's where we find lindsay and james is that James meets this woman who he immediately sees through and is like, there's something, there's something there. And then she, in essence, turns the camera back on him and is like, well, I see you too. Like, there's nothing more rewarding, I think, than when someone really truly sees you, but also truly sees you to remind you of who you were before you kind of went through this darkness of going through grief because the thing is is that grief never really leaves you it is a lifelong process that becomes lighter mm -hmm. if we're fortunate as life goes on but it doesn't mean that you have to completely surrender who you are and those parts that kept you around and kept you hopeful and kept you wanting new beginnings and I think that this movie is showcasing that because you get to see two people who actually get to lift the burden a little bit more of like what it's like to carry these losses with them they can actually find a beginning on the other side rather than focusing on their endings yeah I'm gonna play one more question and then get into this game that I have for you okay. um, what's the one thing you want people to take away from this movie connection that there's a connection and also that staying is okay honestly uh i used to believe that running away was the way to do it if it doesn't if it didn't fit you then you go no don't yeah. go somewhere else yeah. but actually the bravery really comes from staying let me just get in this game quickly i feel okay. like you love it it's called heads up i played it with oh friend. man you know let's go yeah bro. let's do it you know? okay I'm let's gonna do it what what category Ooh, let's go with icons legends and stars Okay, man, because some of them... All right, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, let's do it. Icons, Legends, and Stars. We'll do that one quickly. 
play this. Um, just to let you know. You sure I you don't want to do movies, man? You sure you don't want to do movies? I could do movies. Let's do movies. Blockbusters. Let's do blockbusters. Okay, blockbuster movies. Okay. That's what we're doing. All right. <laughs> man, you better be... Okay. I'm not trying to say I'm competitive, yeah. but this takes a lot of trust. So yeah. you got... Okay. This takes a lot of trust. We're definitely going to get into this. All right, cool. Okay, man. And you know it's up if you get it right yeah. down there. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He knows, he knows. Uh, Jack Skellington. Give me more. This me is more. Halloween. This is Halloween. Halloween. No, pass. Oh my God. Okay. <laughs> uh, 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 Captain America, Black Widow all come together and they form Marvel. But they form what's the group that they Avengers. form? Avengers. Yes. <laughs> uh, okay. It involves uh, these teenagers taking their white asses to this place in Midwest and there's a guy that has a leather face. Leatherface? Yeah, he's the he's the villain, and he carries a certain kind of tool that cuts them up. Jeepers Creepers? No, like it's from the past. Oh my god! <laughs> um, Tom Hanks and Wilson. Oh, the soccer ball Wilson. He's by himself. Oh my god! Uh, Michelle Williams is the best one of these. Halle Berry played her too. It's DC Comics. It's like Batman's homegirl. What is that? Robin Williams dressed up as a woman to get his family back in this movie. Um, Mrs. Doubtfire. Yes. <laughs> Oh my gosh! Uh, 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 Elastigirl and 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 their family and they're the Incredibles. <laughs> wow! I know that my guess yeah, is yeah, wrong. Yeah. I know that I. I feel like your analogies were perfect. I just wasn't getting the movies. Oh my god, <laughs> man! It's safe to say I've broken your trust. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like <laughs> get out. Yes. <laughs> oh man. Thank you so much. Of it's course. been an absolute pleasure, man. Enjoy Same your day and enjoy dude. your time in London. All right. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you so much. Appreciate of course, it, man.